Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us safely into the year 2022, and we are starting together with you. Your will for us is that we should keep in step with you this year. We should uh, be prompt in following you, walking with you as promptly as your children should, keeping in step with you, not lagging behind and not jumping ahead. Father, Lord, as we look into the scripture to understand what it means to keep in step with your spirit, we receive spiritual understanding in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you grant unto me, O Lord, utterance by your spirit, so that I may make known the mystery of the gospel plainly, clearly, with, with, without any ambiguity, without any confusion, but with clarity, with plainness of speech in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for granting us understanding. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, let's open our Bible to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Amen. Amen. You know, the book of Galatians, uh, Galatians is a wonderful book. It's one of my favorite books of the Bible. In it, Paul wrote wonderfully in defense of the gospel of grace. What brought about the writing of this epistle is the, uh, the fact that certain people came to the churches of Galatia eh, and preached a mixture, a false gospel to them. You know, they preached to them that except they were circumcised and kept the law of Moses, they were not saved or they could not be saved. Um, so Paul wrote to tell them, hey guys, you have missed the point. For you to, de to depart from the gospel I gave to you means you have been bewitched. <laughs> Amen. You know, many of us, when we hear witch or witchcraft, we always think about uh, some old woman or somebody flying at night. No. Witchcraft uh, is that which takes you uh, out of the gospel into another gospel. Because when these uh, teachers came from so called Jerusalem, the, you know, they started teaching them you have to be circumcised, you have to do this, don't eat this type of food, don't eat that one, don't eat that one. Dress like this, do like this, so that you can, you know, you'll be a Jew. Well, they were trying to make a Jew out of them, and uh, and they too were following. They started some of they started following. Paul was very, very angry. He said, "You have been bewitched." So witchcraft is not just some uh, some some spell or somebody, you know, all those kind of things you call witchcraft here in Africa. No witchcraft is any teaching that confuses your mind out of the truth into what? Falsehood. Uh, 
No wonder in chapter 1 he told them in verse 6, he said, I am astonished. I am shocked. That's the meaning. I'm astonished. I mean, I'm shocked. What is shock? Huh? I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you into the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. That's verse 6. And he now says in verse 7, he said, not that there is another one. That is, there's nothing, there's nothing like another gospel actually. Huh? There's no other gospel. That's what he's saying. There's no other gospel. He said, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. You see? So when you talk about a false gospel or anything that is contrary to the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ, it is to trouble you. It is to create problem for you. It is to trouble you, to confuse you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You should be more afraid uh, of false doctrine, these legalistic teachings and all those things, that you should be afraid of even Satan himself. Or maybe I should put it more accurately, that you should be more Courteous, huh? more courteous, more sensitive about false doctrine than you are even about Satan. Because Satan, you can deal with him easily. But when it comes to false doctrine, sometimes it's not so easy to detect. And Paul, and that's why Paul was so. He, 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 I've never seen any other epistle of Paul where he was really pissed off. You know, you can you can feel you can feel his his emotion. He wrote this this epistle with strong emotion. There's no other epistle like it. He was really hungry. You can feel like a mother, like a mother trying to grab a child away from a, a, an imposter. And he says in verse 8, he said, but even if we, we ourselves, or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. Verse 9 says, verse 9 says, as we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. Hallelujah. So if, if Paul is letting us know that the gospel is something that is sacred, is holy. You cannot trifle with it. You cannot joke with it. And anybody who is preaching anything contrary to that gospel, don't joke with that person. That person is dangerous. Mm-hmm. 
So, so when somebody is telling you, ah, you are perming your hair, you are doing attachment, you are doing this, you are like some woman on Facebook that is popular now, trending on Facebook, she is saying all those kind of jargon things, nonsensical things, uh, these uh, ladies wearing trousers, uh, ladies wearing jeans, uh, these, uh, you know, all those stupid things. Uh, those are things that the Bible says, if anyone preach such nonsense to you, he said, let him be accursed. That means move away from that person. Amen. Amen. So Paul was writing in defense of the gospel. He reminded them. He reminded them that he was once like those preachers. He was once like them. But he found the truth. Now he has stayed with the truth and in the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I want you to know that the will of God for every one of us is to stand firm in the truth of the gospel that we have been given. We must not allow the personality huh, of the person preaching to move us from the gospel. It doesn't matter the title of the person, Archbishop, Bishop General, General Apostle, and blah, blah, blah. Apostle, Reverend, Doctor, whatever title the person may have, uh, Prophet, Doctor, no. Don't let it move you. Don't let such things move you. Let the truth of the gospel be your stand. And don't let the size of the congregation of the person or the influence of the person, the congregation is 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 pastoring millions of people is holding five or ten services every Sunday. Miracles and signs and wonders are happening. There are big testimonies. Don't let that move you. What you should be concerned about is what is this person preaching? What is he saying about salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus? <laughs> So once, once people start adding things to the gospel, huh? please beware. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You see, when I met this young man, you heard him on uh, uh, that uh, crossover service. I uh, said, Bro, Najim. You, you see the name, Najim. Uh -huh. You know, he was a former Muslim. Uh -huh. And Amen. formerly a, a Rastafarian. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, thank God he told you. When I met him, I I didn't preach uh, against his uh, Islam. I didn't preach against his Rastafarianism. I didn't preach. I just kept telling him about Jesus, the grace of God, what the Bible teaches. I didn't preach against his hair. He's still on his head. I don't, that's not what saves us. Removing it or not removing doesn't change anything. Doesn't save you. Those who don't have Rasta hair on them, doesn't mean you'll go to heaven if you don't have. And it doesn't mean that if you have one in your head, that means you'll go to heaven. No? Hallelujah. It is faith in Christ, coming to the knowledge of Christ. 
that saves men. Hallelujah. That's what saves us. Hallelujah. Amen. So many people have tried to <laughs> preach Christ to him, but they will come with uh, legalistic preaching. They, are, they focus on his air. Uh, is a uh, membership of the Rastafarian uh, group here in the uh, whole in Ghana here, yeah? uh, and they start preaching against Rastafarianism. Preach that he has to cut his hair. I think his sister attends uh, one popular church in this community, and the sister keep preaching to him. Hey, you must cut that hair. It's of the devil. It's of this. It's of that. <laughs> and that even push him away from Christ. But when I started preaching to him and showing him the gospel, preaching about the Christ, it's all about Christ. And Christ came into his heart. He was born again, changed, transformed. And, and even to today, I've never spoken about his head. It's none of my business. It's his choice. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Does, your air do does not recommend you to God. And there's no air style recommended by God. You should just be decent. Be decent, that's all. Hallelujah. Amen. If you want to have coin, make it, make the jerry coin very well. Huh? Do it well. If you want to do skin, do it well. I was telling my daughter I would do skin for her one day. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I showed her pictures of ladies who had shining skin. I said, oh, you do one day. <laughs> Salvation is not about what you put on or what you don't put on. Salvation is strictly about faith in Christ. <laughs> It is when somebody receives Christ that the Spirit of God will begin to lead that person and guide that person. Amen. I preach to people. I never preach against girlfriend. And yes, I preach to people after they receive Christ. I never knew that that kind of that person has over 20 girlfriends. Never knew. Oh, I'm serious. More than 20, and each of them, they don't know each other. And not that he's taking one drop, whom I say at the same time. And he's a super, he's a playboy. And when I preached the gospel to him, he received Christ. I didn't talk about girlfriend, but I was just talking about Jesus. He later came to confess, and I said, Pastor, I've told all my girlfriends. I said, girlfriends? He said, I said, I mean, he said, just about, just about roughly 35 of them. <laughs> I told them how to go. When the Holy Spirit comes into us, it changes us completely. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He is a spirit of holiness. He leads us into true holiness. There is false holiness. Oh. True holiness. 
Through holiness. All this fake holiness is the one that says your hair, uh, a Rastafarian must cut his hair before, uh, before. No, who told you that? Who told you that? And they will tell some ladies, you have to go and that that pimped one, that one that you pay, you must remove it completely. You go and scrape it so that a natural one will grow. Uh, those things are not the gospel. That's not the gospel. The gospel is faith in Christ. And by the power of the word of God, you begin to be transformed from inside out. All those, all those people who say they see vision of people in hellfire with earring, with pen air because uh, with trousers. I wonder how they saw. Even Lazarus who died for four days did not come back with such vision. I don't know where they get their own. You know, some people have serious malaria, uh, and so they start having uh, all these uh, nonsense dreams and visions, and they say God revealed to them. Even John, the, John the apostle, who went on the island of Patmos with all the vision, so did he see anybody? Did he describe anybody in hellfire? Stop okay. listening to all those kind of nonsense, whether on Facebook or, uh, or, or WhatsApp, and some people will record the thing and send it to you. And some people will tell you, I had it. They, they will talk, and you hear their voice. They are very serious. And they will even type, ah, please, that's false gospel. Stop listening to them. That's witchcraft. That is the real witchcraft. You understand? That's the witchcraft. Hallelujah. Amen. You know me, I, I have been I've been part of a church, uh, Christian ministry, where to even shake a sister is a sin. To shake to I mean to, to do like this to a sister is a sin. I've been a part of that before. You don't watch TV, you don't do all those things. But now that ministry they are watching TV now. In those days when they want to do wedding, the wedding gown will be everywhere paper cover. But now everything is changing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that is not holiness. That is not salvation. They call it worldliness. They say that is worldliness. But it's, that's not worldliness. We've got to understand the scripture. So Paul warned the Galatians against the false gospel. So when you see a Christian brother or sister who has been listening to the pure gospel that we are listening to in this place, and the person and somebody now come and preach, and now you start now doing a uh, con rule, eh? You were doing permit before. Now you're not doing. You're not doing. You're not doing con now. You're now be using rubber to tie your uh, because you want to go to heaven. You want to make heaven. You don't want to wear trousers again because you now you want to make heaven. When you see someone and you say why, you say, oh, I want to make heaven. That person has been bewitched. Mm-hmm. 
Hallelujah. That's why Paul said to them in chapter 3, verse 1. He said, Oh foolish Galatians. Oh foolish Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Who has bewitched you? Who has cast spell on you? How come? Hey, look at what he asked them in verse 2. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? That is how did you receive the Holy Spirit? How did you get born again? Amen. Amen. So it is by the hearing of faith that we are saved. We are not under those kind of laws of don't do this, don't do that, don't touch this, don't touch that. No. We are led of the Spirit. And so Paul went on to all, you know, defending the gospel and explaining that. There is no other gospel than faith in Christ. No other. Nothing else. That's what he explained in chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. Yeah. Even some part of chapter 5. <laughs> That's why he said that he told them in chapter 5, verse 1. He says, For freedom. For what? For what? For freedom. Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Don't submit again. Don't, su don't submit to such nonsense. Hey, the prophet said he saw vision. He saw that. Don't listen to that nonsense. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so he began to tell them about some other issues among them. Amen. Amen. And um, he began to help them to understand that now that they have received the Spirit and they are alive by the Spirit, they should walk by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, We are free. Christ has set us free. We are not under rules and regulations of the law of Moses. Don't eat titles. Don't eat titles. Don't eat this. Don't use your ring. Don't pen your hair. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't paint your nail. Don't do all those things. We are not under that one. Hallelujah. Now he tells them in verse 13. He says, for you were called to freedom, brothers. He said, he said, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. So we are to love one another and serve one another in love. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we are to love one another 
Walk, that's what it means to walk by the Spirit, to love one another. Walking in love. Hallelujah. Because that's the old commandment of the Lord. That's the old commandment. That's what it says in verse 14. He said, For the old law of Moses is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Then he now got to verse 16. Although before he got to verse 16, you know, he told them in verse 15, but if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. So there was some uh, misunderstanding and crisis, you know, envy, you know, among them. So Paul said, hey, stop that. Stop that. So they, they thought they needed to live by the law. Amen. Praise the Lord. But Paul told them, no, you don't need to live by the law of Moses. And that's why I say verse 16. Verse 16, he says, But I say, walk by the Spirit. Walk by what? Walk by the Walk by the Walk by the Spirit. He says, And you will not gratify or fulfill the desires of the flesh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we will begin to understand what the Pope mean by walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit or walk in the Spirit. To walk. What does it mean to walk? I want to, is he talking about we physically taking step walking like this, the way you walk to school? We must understand that what Paul is, uh, the way to walk here is figurative. Yeah, it's figurative. It's not literal. There's no way you can walk physically now and say, I'm walking in the spirit. No. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a figure of speech. Amen. Amen. Now, let's look at uh, the use of that, wor- of that uh, word, walk. Let's see in the Bible. So, let's start from Genesis. What work? Work by the Spirit. Work by the Spirit. Don't forget that it is verse 25 that is our focus, but we are not yet there. But if we, once we understand verse 16, then we will understand verse 25. So let's focus on verse 16 first. That's Galatians 5:16. Now, Genesis chapter 5. Now, let's look at verse 22. The Bible says, Enoch walked with God after he fathered Methuselah 300 years and had other sons and daughters. So, Enoch walked with God. Mm. Then look at verse 24 also. It says again, Enoch walked with God. 
and, he, and he was not for God took him. Amen. Amen. Enoch walked with God. Does it mean that Enoch and God stood side by side and they were walking through the land? Is that what he's saying? So Enoch walked with God is a figure of speech. Then in chapter 6, chapter 6, are you there? Okay. Now let's look at verse 9. The Bible talking about, in, about Noah. The Bible says in verse 9, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. So Noah walked with God. Enoch walked with God. How did they walk with God? What does it mean that they walked with God? And all the saints, they walked with God. How, what does it mean that somebody walked with God? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We will understand very soon. Amen. Amen. You remember in the book of Psalm, Psalm 1. Psalm 1. If you look at Psalm 1, talking about the man that God has blessed. In verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1. He said, Blessed is the man who walks not. He walks not. He does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Amen. So, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. So, to walk, what does it mean? The word well, walk is a, a figure of speech that describes the totality of a man's life and conduct. How you live, your own conduct, your belief system and your conduct from it. So when the Bible says that Enoch and Noah walked with God, is talking about their life that they by the way they lived huh, they pleased God it means to walk with God they did not walk against God they walked with God that is walking with God in the same direction with him Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at the book of Hebrews chapter 11. We read verse 5 and 6. Hebrews chapter 11. Verses 5 and 6. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. It says, By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now, before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. He was commended as what? Having what? Pleased God. See, did you understand what we just read now? You see, 
In Genesis, hello, pay attention. In Genesis chapter 5 that we read, how did he describe the life of Enoch? He said Enoch did what? Walk with God. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11, did you see the, the word walk there? Eh? Is the word work there? Eh? Is it there? It's not there. He didn't talk. Hello? Yet he said that Enoch was commended as what? Having pleased God. So, what was he supposed to say? If you want to use the language of Genesis, he should have said what? He was commended as what? Having walked with God. You get it now? So, it means when. Moses was writing, saying Enoch walked with God. Paul, I mean, the author of um, Hebrew, uh, some people say it's Paul. Well, the author of Hebrews did not use the word walked. He simply said Enoch pleased God. Amen. He pleased God. That's the real thing. That's the reality. He pleased God. So Enoch walked with God. Noah walked with God. Implied that they did what? They pleased God. Amen. Amen. How did they please God? It says in verse 6, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. So, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Which means, without faith, it is impossible to work with God. So, in other words, the work of Enoch and Noah with God, they are pleasing God, is strictly based on what? Faith. Without faith, you cannot please God. But Jesus Christ was not yet born at that time. Let us he died at that time. So, which faith are we talking about? The faith. Now, that faith we were, they were talking about, the faith that Enoch had, and the faith that Noah had, the faith that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the rest of them, and David, all of them, the faith by which they walked with God is faith in the promise of the Messiah, the promise Amen. of eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the, that's what you see in verse 1. Yeah. Hebrew 11 verse 1. Yeah. Now, faith. That is faith for those patriarchs. Faith for them is a substance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. So they, they hoped for the Messiah. They hoped for eternal life. They, don't, they didn't have it, but they hoped for it. And in that 
hope in that conviction that God will give them eternal life, they walked with God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. With that promise in their heart, with the word that God has spoken to them, which passed from generation to generation, they walked with God. That is, Amen. they lived their life to please God. Amen. Now I want you to pay attention, please. I want you to understand what it means to live by faith. Or to walk by faith. Hello? To please God by faith. Hello? Because there are two ways you can please God. You can try to please God. Although there's only one true way. But there are other ways people try to please God. Let me put it that way. Now, the writer of Hebrew revealed to us that Enoch, Noah, Abraham, all these people, they pleased God by what? Faith. Faith. They had faith in the promise of the Messiah. So they were looking forward to the Messiah. But for us, we are not looking forward to the Messiah. Christ has died 2,000 years behind us. So, we are living in the fulfillment of the promise. Amen. That's why the Bible says that those people, uh, the patriarchs of old, they only had the promise of God. They did not receive it. They did it. They didn't receive eternal life. They, no, Abraham did not have eternal life. Uh, uh, Noah, you know, all of them. They didn't have eternal life inside them when they died. Amen. But it, it, but we today we have eternal life right inside us now. Because if you look at verse 39 of that same book of Hebrews, 39 and verse 40, he says all these, all these people that have been mentioned from Abel down, down, down to all the other ones, he said all these, all these Old Testament characters, Old Testament believers, though commended, praised, commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. They did not receive eternal life. They did not receive the gift of the Spirit dwelling in them. Why? Verse 40. Since God had provided something better for us, we that are living now, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. So they could not receive the promise until we have received it. Do you understand? Yeah. You can see how fortunate we are. Yes. Oh, yeah. glory to God. Hello. Hi. Now, these people lived and pleased God. But the Bible tells us that it was by faith. 
Hello. Uh, it was not by the law. It was by what? Faith. A lot of people are trying to please God by obeying the law. That shall not do this. That shall not do that. They are trying to please God by setting rules and regulations of the law, written codes. Hello? Moral laws. Hello? Rules of men. And they are trying to please God by obeying the law and commandments of men. But such people, such people cannot please God. Because we cannot please God by that. The only way we can please God is by faith. Abraham did not have any law given to him, did he? Did he have any law? Was, there, was the law given to Abraham? Good. Abraham did not know anything called worship God on Sabbath day, did he? <laughs> the law was not given to him. So Saturday worship did not bind him. He lived by faith. He was free. He, like, like what Paul said, for freedom Christ has set us free. So he was a free man. He didn't have any rule of don't use your ring. His wife, Sarah, used your ring. He used even nose ring, everything he used. I was I was telling one guy who was so legalistic in this, and he was shouting like I said, if if I show you the picture of David, Abraham, and all these old testament, I show you their picture. Eh? If I show you what they look like, even from the Bible, I show you what they look like. It will shock you. <laughs> Abraham, David, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it's not by following some rules and regulations of men. We, we, we please God or we walk by faith. That's what the Bible says. The just shall live by what? Faith. Not by the law. Hello. Praise the Lord. So we walk by what? Faith. So when Paul says, now, when Paul now says, walk by the Spirit. Now, I want you to understand something. When we say faith, that faith is the spirit of God dwelling in us. Because it is the spirit that imparts faith into our heart through the gospel. So when when Paul said, walk by the Spirit, he's saying, you are not to walk by the law. You are not to walk by the law. But you are to walk by the dictates of the Spirit. So there are two, there are two controlling forces guiding our behavior or our conduct. There are two options. One, the law. Number two, the spirit. You have a choice to make. You You either walk by the law or you walk by the spirit. Amen. Amen. So Paul is telling them, walk by the Spirit. And you, and you will not gratify the lust of the flesh, the desires of the flesh. 
So it's all about faith in Christ. So that's where it begins. And that's the first thing I want us to know. Next Sunday we will continue. Amen. Amen. So to walk means to conduct ourselves, to live, to behave ourselves. It means to conduct ourselves, to be guided. Amen. Our, our conduct. And as believers, our conduct should be guided by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And how did we have the Spirit? How did we have the Spirit? Look at chapter 5 again. Look at that chapter 5. Look at it. Chapter 5. Or chapter 3 rather. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. Verse 2. Look at, we have read it before. I want us to read it again. Verse 2. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Amen. Amen. So it is by the hearing with faith, the hearing of the gospel. Amen. So we have the spirit in us through faith. We are not under the law. So our life is not guided by the law of Moses. Our life is to be guided by the Spirit. And this is by faith. Living by faith. Hallelujah. So when we come next week, we'll go deeper into that. We'll begin to understand what it means to walk by the Spirit. And maybe by grace of God, we'll get to verse 25. Then we will, we will see what it, what it... Then we'll see the importance of uh, what was stoichio. We'll know what it really means to stoichio. It's a verb. To <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We will know the difference between uh, walk in chapter 5 verse 16 and walk in chapter 5 verse 25. They are different. But when we get there, we'll learn. But I, but I believe we have been blessed this morning. Yes. I, I hope you have been blessed this morning. Yes. This is just foundation. You know I like laying foundation very well. Amen. Amen. So that you can understand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what does it mean to walk with God? So, uh, does it mean I, me, I, I will call God God? I will call God God. Uh, what does it mean to work with God? It means to what? To please God by our life and conduct. But how do we now please God? By what? By faith. By faith. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And there are two options by which we can live or please God. Try to please God. What are these two way, options or two ways? Huh? By the law and by what? The spirit. But I know you know my own choice. I live by faith. I live by the spirit. I am born of the spirit. I say I'm born of the spirit. I'm born again and I'm born of the spirit. 
And because I'm born of the Spirit, I walk by the Spirit. Glory to God. Let's be on our feet this morning. I want us to give thanks to God because He has not called us into bondage of the law, He called us into liberty of the Spirit. He has called us into the freedom of the children of God. He has not called us into don't touch this, don't touch that. No. He called us into liberty, freedom. We are free to please God. We walk by the Spirit, not by the dictates of the law. And I think we should give glory to God for that. We should thank God for that. We should glorify God for that. And say, Father, I thank you because you have given me grace. Thank you, Lord, because you have called me to a walk with you by faith. Thank you, Lord. The ability is in me, the capacity I have it to walk by the Spirit. I have the ability in me through your Spirit to walk with you, to please you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King of Glory. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please Him. But we have that faith of God in us. We have the faith of God in us. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you for the gift of faith. Thank you for the gift of your spirit in us. We give you glory. We give you praise your name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.